What's up, Warriors? Hello, IK War for One Twenty coming back at you guys. Really excited to get on with our next actual review. Uh, this is gonna be for Skiths. Uh, uh, sorry, Sixth. I, 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 I always mess up how to say their name because, like, my, mentally I want to say Skith. Uh, when the actual the name is is Sixth. Uh, so, uh, so pardon me, guys. Sixth. It, it's it's one of those names that mentally you just always mess up. So pardon me, homie slices. But yeah, this is sixth new album. They're they're, they're back uh, for the for the first time in, in quite a long time. They've been kind of like off the radar for about the past nearly 11 years as far as not releasing any new material. This is actually the first album that they were released with a new singer on their on their uh, on their squad. Now, granted, they are a multi multi vocalist band, and more or less, this is a band that many of you probably don't know about simply because of the fact that they have been gone for nearly 11 years. I mean, that, this is that's 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 a long time to be gone. Uh, from the scene and, and you know if you're gonna be gone from 11 11 years you have to really already have had some legendary status and really the sad thing is, is that there this is a, is a band from what we call the gent movement or even math core or uh, or even progressive hardcore depending on who you're talking to and what kind of context uh, and this is a band that really in a lot of ways simply because of the fact that they stopped touring when they stopped touring got overshadowed a lot by Meshuggah uh, in that kind of same type of field. They weren't exactly the same kind of style, but they were ones that got really overtaken in popularity and notoriety by Meshuggah because Meshuggah kept on soldiering and these guys kind of took, took a, long a long period break. These guys are from the UK and, and have always been very well appreciated within the underground metal community, but never really have had much mainstream uh, uh, success as far as that goes. And it's, it's okay, but it's, it's one of those where you definitely get a unique sound, at least going into this album. You know, the mathcore genre, as we know, is kind of an offbeat, bare-ass album. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a situation where you have really uh, random time signatures, not much of a gallopy kind of feel. You know, where in, where in most metal genres, even in the most hardcore extreme of metal genres, like such as speed metal or even extreme uh, sub-metal subgenres like Black Death, um, like death and all, and all that kind of jazz, you get this kind of head banging atmosphere where it's just, you know, where it's very much a, a head banging process. Uh, where in mathcore, you kind of have to dance to it or, or, or groove to it in a way, kind of like you would dance to it if you were listening to like a, like a dubstep kind of variety. Uh, not to compare it with dubstep, but it's kind of like, like, the, the dubstep of the metal world in a lot of ways where it's just it's off it's off kilt it's off beat you can't really traditionally headbang to it because it, it'll, it'll change on you frequently so, so you gotta do something more like this where it's just like you know something like that where you're just kind of like you're, you're just kind of like getting it like I don't know how else to do it, but I'm sitting down right now. But really, you know, that's really what it comes down to. And with Skith's album, you really, sixth album, you kind of really get that. And you kind of really feel that kind of just pulse. And it's it just, it definitely uh, encompasses the entire album. As far as just the, the, the general idea for, for you going into this, before we start actually sample, showing, showing off samples of tracks and really discussing the individual stylings of this, of this band in this actual work, the best way to describe this album as far as as far as uh, preference, as far as how it feels, as far as that goes, I would say uh, imagine imagine the delivery, uh, focus, and tact of System of a Down with the time signatures of a pre two thousand and one three eleven. That's kind of the best way to put it. With of course the sound being something similar to a, only when I say this, they sound similar to, they sound more like like a, like a three, they sound more like a like a um, like a system of a down, but not quite like a but but more like like lo, like a hypnotized system of a down than they do uh, like toxicity system of a down. And as far as the actual like play, 
Their play does feel, is of course math course style, so it feels a lot more like a Meshuggah, like a lot more like a Dillinger escape plan. Um, you know, just that kind of, that kind of uh, just offbeat, kind of just random, uh, some, someone might kill you during the recording of the album kind of feel. And you get that very much from their first, from their video single off this record, which is going to be the first title, uh, title track off this album, which is Vivid. I'm going to show you a clip, a clip of this track right, right here. So that way you can kind of understand what I'm talking about, where it's just, it's helter-skelter, you're not really sure what's going to happen next, and you, and you might, you, you feel like you might get stabbed if you were actually in the recording process of this album, which is always kind of fun. You see what I'm getting at from that kind of like light clip, uh, clip from the actual video, from the vivid lyric, lyric video. It's like it's like it's it's like you're it's you're you're perceiving the progressive the progressive plot development as far as the music goes, but it's in such a it's such a it's such a random kind of offbeat. You know, I hate calling it offbeat because it's not really what it is. It, it's still on its cue, but it's definitely off its off of a, a normative time signature to where you really can't flow with it the way you normally would with most metal. Where you know you listen to a Creator album, you listen to a uh, you know even a power metal album like my like the Unleash the Archers album we recovered recently where you definitely have this kind of flow to it where you're just kind of you can sit in your car and kind of nod to it you know with this you kind of just kind of like it's kind of like you know it's just kind of like random and kind of off as far as that goes and you get that for this entire really 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 album it's really starts off that kind of that kind of feel for the start of it but they they, they they don't they don't keep it that way they don't keep it that way throughout the entire thing where every single song just has this kind of uh, you know just just helter skelter kind of just just random af kind of sound where you're not really sure what's going on and in fact they use a lot of different elements that really help help get you kind of in the mood i guess you could say that's kind of the best way to put it now there's actually a song on this album that does feature a uh, a, a guest singer and that guest singer i forget from which band it is it's a uh, it's oh, darn it! I forgot which band it was from that they had a guest singer from, uh, but you know they they're, they're doing this in a way to where that where really you you definitely get uh, this kind of uh, this kind of you know just just good feel about it. It's kind of the best way I can put it. You know, it's not one where you're where you're just kind of lost in translation or or you know just overpowered through through eleven songs being all, all this kind of crazy uh, kind of feel. You don't have that. You don't really have that at all. And I, I think that's really one of the best things, as far as I'm concerned, that you just get this kind of uh, this kind of different feel from these British rockers. Uh, and I say rockers. I shouldn't say rockers. It's metalheads. Come on now, Lev. What are you doing up in here? I'm sorry, people. I am sorry, people. But yes, they 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 keep this kind of presence and pressure to where you really do feel it throughout the entire thing. You you feel it to where it's kind of like you're learning more about what's going on in each individual track. But there are three tracks in this album that depart from that kind of style and really have this sexy kind of voice going on that really give an extra presence to what's going on in the in, in, the, in the in the in the story's plot. Uh, I'm gonna play you uh, one of those tracks. It's the moon's been gone for hours, and I'm telling you, it's just. It's got this real sexy kind of tone behind it, as far as the singing goes, because it's got this kind of slowed down type of interlude tracks. There's three of these interlude-esque tracks where they basically help progress the plot of the story through the, uh, through the, through the talking. Listen to this, guys. Surrounded by hands and faces, I'm clutching my baggage and ringing my bell of help. I don't think it'll be heard. There are two. Tell me that is not sick and, and awesome in such a way. And those three songs, uh, the Weaver, uh, the, uh, the, the, those three songs have that, have that kind of feel to it. It's the ship has sailed, uh, moon has gone, been gone for hours, and when it rains, the ending song. All had that kind of just vibe where you got this almost piratey kind of voice kind of gone there. The moon's been gone for hours. And it's just like, yeah, it has. Yeah, it has. Yeah, it has. And it's just like, I don't even know what he's trying to say right now, but you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'll, I'll go with it. You can, you just keep talking like that, and I'll, I'll follow you in, into the in the depths of the un, of the unknown right there. We'll go into Mexico with 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 a bottle of whiskey and just see what happens. Okay, buddy. You, you know, you just you keep doing that. 
we're, we're, we're game. But that's that's kind of the feel that you get with this kind of album as far as that goes. And I, I, I dig it. I, I dig it so much because it just the, it adds to the flow, adds to the feel. The song Cracks of Light, like I said, has, has this, has this uh, the secondary singer on, on there. I forget which band it was It was from. It's uh, It'll be... I should have taken a note on that right there, but it's, it's definitely a, a bit of a different kind of style as far as that goes. But really my favorite song on the record, as far as that goes, is, is my next song I'm going to be playing for you. It's going to be uh, the song Golden Cufflinks, and I'm just going to tell you right now, it's just got this appeal to it that I, I just can't under, explain. It's it's different than the rest of the album. And you know you know me, I, I like things a little bit more power metal-y, a little bit more, more vocal driven. Uh, mainly it's because uh, that's what I like. I like I like lyricism. I like uh, description. I like being able to see the picture through the singer's eyes. Now the music's very important to me as well, but I'm not going to get that kind of appreciation so much from a metal from a mathcore band that I would from say uh, listening to a a, a a dream theater album, a good a good dream theater album. But you know what I'm saying, guys. So uh, let's take a look at this this clip from uh, this uh, sound clip from the golden from Golden Cufflinks, so you can understand what I'm talking about here. And this, this song is what, probably my favorite song on the record, as far as I'm concerned. In that track going into the chorus you you really just get this kind of feel like it's it feels like like a like a like, like a like a very vocal driven system of a down track and then it has that chorus that chorus uh you know part right there where the vocals almost seem like it's good lincoln park which i hate talking about lincoln park and when it comes to metal scope but you gotta admit that when when chester bennington's actually singing in, on a good track it, and it and it gels together really well it just fits it fits better than, than most metal bands and that's why they were so popular when they were when they were really popular and they still are popular but you know fuck them they're, they're, they're pop now uh, but anyway when it comes down to it guys this album is definitely one that is not an easy listen uh, as far as uh, for somebody that is listening looking for a for a more uh, vocal driven album or a more riff driven album uh, both of these two are not present in this in this in this album and that's because it's mathcore you know mathcore is not a very vocal driven uh, subgenre it's not a very uh, riff driven subgenre so if you're looking for consistency if you're looking for uh, I guess something that you can headbang to um, th then you're not gonna find that here it's very prog it's very uh, you know story driven it's very mood driven it's very uh, it's very uh, theme thematic as far as its flow as far as how things go uh, you know that the album itself is not very long I think it's like 48 minutes when it comes down to it you're not gonna see very many long tracks on here I think the longest tracks actually Actually, I think this is a, this is an album that only has one track over five minutes, which you know is very non-metal when it comes down to. I'm, I'm just joking, but you know, usually a metal, most metal albums have you know at least one or three tracks with weight that are over five minutes. You know, this one this one only has one track over five minutes long. Here's the thing, though, guys, is that this band, this album, is a good album in its own style, though. But it's one that you definitely are not going to be easily listening to. Uh, so if you're looking for something that's more, it's a bit more poppy, a little bit more fresh. And when I say poppy, I don't mean like I don't mean like, ah, I can see clearly now, go fuck yourself. No, that's not, that's not what we're talking about right here. We're talking about essentially the idea that, that, that you're going to have, uh, you know, sing-along elements out, out there uh, or, or sing-along or feel-along riffs. You're not going to have any anthemic riffs in this album. You're not going to have anything that you really can get behind. The, the closest thing to that is going to be in Golden Cufflinks when you get when you get that chorus part that I, that I showed you right there, which I, I really liked a lot because I like I said I'm more of a power metal, more of a uh, uh, of a ballad of a ballad uh, liker. Uh, you know I love thrash metal as well because the groove behind it. Um, you know very much a, a, a new metal fan. Uh, love melodic death. Love symphonic metal. Not so much. Um, you know, a, 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 a big fan of mathcore or gent, which is what this is more of, is more of gent, which is more of a sugar, more more sixth, 
here. Uh, but you know, that's kind of the thing is that, you know, this is a very different focus and a very different style. So if you're looking for more traditional metal, this is not an album for you. But for those of you who appreciate something uh, different and off kilter and, and not of your traditional funk house wheelhouse, definitely try, try this out. We're going to go over to the tally screen right here and kind of go over what we're actually looking for as far as the scoring of this album goes. Now as far as for, for sixth Ret uh, uh, return to the to the production. Their first album in 11 years, where they finally return to it. They finally get uh, back in the studio. Finally, give us another taste of their style of gent music, which is is a very welcomed return as far as being a, a different approach than what we've seen for quite some time. It's a very welcomed return. As far as production value goes, you know there there wasn't anything that really really stood out as being uh, you know horribly under underproduced or overproduced. Bass lines were sharp, uh, vocals were, were sharp, and remember, we're not actually judging the styling of things right here, we're judging, judging the mixing of things. You know, where, was it mixed well? Was there any instrument that felt lacking? Was there any instrument that overpowered the vocals to where you couldn't, you know, figure it out at all? Or was there any, any, any just off, off noise in there? And there never really was. I have to give it a, a 10 out of 10 right there. I know it's a very easy 10 out of 10 for most bands to get, but it is nevertheless a 10 out of 10. Now, uh, going over to our artwork, our album artwork, I gotta say, the album artwork itself is definitely one to drive you in and get you interested in this album. I don't know about you, but but this uh, this scene on here that feels like almost like something like the Matrix or Alien or something like that definitely drew my attention and definitely gave me the oppor the interest to look into this band when I was looking look, looking through uh, you know the, the new releases of the metal charts to actually put together and figure out what I wanted to review next. This this is definitely one uh, of the best artworks that I've seen in quite a while. Digging it, ten out of ten, right there for artwork. As far as for songwriting, um, you know, obviously there's not there's not the big overproduced uh, you know hooks and and whatnot that you're seeing in most of these songs. Uh, the three interlude tracks definitely f uh, I like the I like the, uh, the, the 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 the, uh, the speech in there. I really enjoyed the 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 vocalities that were that were displayed on here. Definitely liked. Um, the approach it was very different uh but at the same time because it's not really one that you can really consistently headbang to i hate to dis I, I hate to drop an album score because of of of, a, of just a band's uh you know style of metal but i have to here it's a, it's going to be a seven out of ten as far as for pacing you know does the album lack does the album uh feel bland after a while does the album flow together pretty well the interlude tracks really help here. The interlude tracks really help here. The interlude tracks are spaced out. Uh, they're, they're song number four, song number eight, and song number 12, I believe. And yeah, it's song number 12. And the thing is, guys, when you have those, those interlude tracks on there, you think that, oh, that won't be very necessary or important. It is. It breaks up the pace, and especially in a band like this that's very off-kilter, off-beat, it makes it much easier to listen to it consistently as an album. Being also that the album is very short as far as actual time length, helps it out a lot. Going to have to give it uh, a 9 out of 10 uh, simply because of, of the interlude tracks really keeping, it, keeping everything concise and not really allowing you to get beaten up too hard going through the album play. Keeps everything concise for you to listen to. Standouts. They're really... As far as it goes, outside of the interlude tracks, there's really one track for me as a, as a non-fan of this genre. Uh, when I say non-fan, I appreciate this album and I'm going to keep it actually on my iPod. But at the same time, you know, I'm not going back to look at more Gent music. I'm not going to go download every single Meshuggah or, Meshuga or a Periphery album right now to go listen to all those and just really just get up in that biscuit, you know. This is definitely a, 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 a different type of scene for me as far as... Uh, you know standout tracks the best one as far as for me that really just I was just like There's only one track on this album that really I wanted to go back and hit re hit replay on over and over again And that was golden cufflinks vivid, vivid, vivid was a close second, but golden cufflinks was the one I Have to give it a, fi a, a, a four out of ten on this on this count just because it just it just wasn't you know It's it's, it's first of all it's a prog album 
so it's not going to have that those standout tracks as often anyway. But being that it was also a prog album that really wasn't one that you can groove to, or really one that you can really feel, Golden Cufflinks was kind of a, a standout of standouts, if you will. As far as for cohesion, do the tracks work together? They do. They really do. Um, even when uh, with the interludes being of a vastly different style and not really being a, a, of a musical uh, emphasis, or even having the fact that the, that the interludes have a very different voice being used or employed, it's still cohesive and still functions together and holds together in a thematic pace. 8 out of 10 there. As far as for replayability, am I going to replay this album every single day? I don't know. I'm just, no, I'm just kidding. When it comes down to it, I, I think this is one that definitely, uh, the standout track, uh, Golden Cufflinks, is definitely one that's going to be constantly on my playlist for the next few months or so. I, I may even suggest it for some radio play, but definitely not uh, as far as I'm going, am I going to re replay this album over and over again while I'm hunting in Pokemon Go? Which, yes, I like to list, I like to listen to, you know, pop in a good album while I'm going Pokemon hunting or when I'm sitting in, in a sauna for an hour and a half. Um, not going to be this, this album, maybe, unless I want something really just different to blow my ears up. Going to give it a 6 out of 10 there. Uh, preference. Personal preference to the style of the, of the music. Uh, you know, is, is it my taste? It's not really my taste, but I definitely felt it in a lot of ways and really enjoyed what they were bringing toward it. Going to give it a 7 out of 10 there. Suitability. Uh, as far as suitability, this is a band that can actually go on tour with most of their metal acts and really hold up with them or, or you know, at least function together with them. Can I put them in a playlist? And the thing is, even though it's very off-kilter and off-dimension, because the tracks are not very long, I can put any one of the tracks that's not that's an actual music track and not the interlude tracks in on any playlist and actually have them function together. It's a very weird thing for me to say that they're not very good replayability for, re for personal replaying status, or, or, or very many standouts, but they are actually suitable simply because of the fact that they're different, but they're not very long. If those songs were closer to nine minutes long, this would be a horrible score for suitability. But because they're they're shorter, most of them being most of them being four minutes or under, I have to give it an eight, I have to give it an eight out of ten right a nine out of ten right there. Almost gave them an eight. It doesn't really matter, but you know at the end of the day it does. As far as a personal mastery, they these guys definitely have their style down. They definitely proved to be the veterans that they are. They definitely show no showed no recording rust when they haven't been in the studio for what was eleven years. You know, definitely showed really solid mastery. Solid gets baseline work. Loved the baseline work, especially on tracks like the Aura and Century of the Narcissist. As far as um, other instruments go, definitely the vocals were solid. Uh, the drums, uh, you know, obviously being a mathcore band, they're kind of a little bit a little bit off time signatures as far as what I would normally expect, but still very much of appreciative and listening to it and enjoying it. Mastery, you're going to give it a 9 out of 10. As far as for total scoring on here, so when it all comes down to this album, you know, the total score of this album is going to be a 79 out of 100, meaning it's going to be a C-plus record, definitely worth, worth checking out. Even if you're not a fan of this genre, even if you're not a fan of this style, it's definitely still one that you definitely need to, need to check out. I know it's weird for me to say, you know, well, even if you don't like this kind of music, it's still a good album and one that you should definitely check out. It is. If you, if you like things like System of a Down, but are more open to experimentation, this is one definitely that you should give a, should give a shout out to. That's all I got to say about this album for Sixth, uh, The Future in Whose Eyes. Definitely an interesting album from Peaceville Records. One that you should check out. Links in the description below are going to be for, uh, for, for the video tracks as well as for the, band, for the, band, for the record company's uh, uh, YouTube page. I may even put the band's website on there. Guys, check it out if you're interested in, as far as a different style of metal. And as always, Warriors, keep still the kneecaps. See you next time.